Okay, I have you now, and now I'm going to go back and pin your mat. Okay, cool. So all you guys can see the top of my head there. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, Andy, is um, that good now? It looks good to me. How does it look to you guys? You give us thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. All right, cool. You're good, Danielle. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thanks, Sharon. All right, so here we've got, um, I'll just really quickly show it again, what we were doing there. Um, the 0 0.014 feeding wire, here's those designs, regular crimps. So these are just crimp tubes, they're two by two. And you'll wanna get three of them. So this is kind of unusual, but it's the way we're gonna bring the strands down at the end, but you'll need an extra crimp for it. And you can also use, um, you know, like a toggle. I'm just using a regular lobster claw clasp but feel free to use anything that you have handy that you like. And you might need some jump rings. I've just got some cool um, jump rings here that are copper color. I'm just feeling the copper today, so. Optionally, you can also add like a bunch of charms. Um, you can add what, basically anything you want, really. There's no limit. I'm gonna throw some charms on mine at the end. And so for the beads, uh, I've already got a really, really pretty blue colorway going here, and I've got a really gorgeous purple. And I did use mixes for these. I used the twin bead mixes. So each of these colors was already in the mixes that I used. One was Ocean Breeze, and I think this other one was Berry. And then today I was thinking, I need a green one. So I'm going to do the, um, what is this called? Landscape, Iris Landscape. So that's going to be my colorway for today. Dump a bunch of these out. What I do is I put them in containers and then I cut the um, labels off and where's I store them. And so then I was thinking we'll bring in the, the green carnelian star beads. But these are the cool beads. They have like a, I mean, probably don't need that many, but here they are. Um, they have a cool little star in the center. Isn't that neat looking? And they're a six millimeter bead with a large hole. That's the other cool part about this is we're gonna be able to get three strands of beading wire into them. So that's convenient for giving you lots of possibility. I think they also would fit on like one millimeter leather or even even 1.5 millimeter leather, a single strand for it, it would probably work. Okay, so for beading wire, you're gonna to wanna to cut two strands. The first strand should be um, about the length that you would do if you were just making a regular bracelet. So for me, I'm gonna just cut about 10 inches or so, maybe a little more, 10, 11 or so. So that's strand one. And then the second one should be double that length. So I'm gonna try to make that about, let's see here. 22 right there. So for me, I cut 11 and 22. That's just what I did. And go ahead and bring your clasp or your chain, whichever you're starting with. You're starting with your chain, bring that on. I'm gonna start with my clasp. Bring that on one side. And then I'm gonna bring the ends together. So this is the long strand. This is the one that I cut at 22 inches. So I've got the clasp right here. I folded it over and found the midpoint by bringing those ends together. I'm going to take both of those and bring them through one of my crimp beads. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to leave a little bit of air around my clasp, but not going to crimp it just yet. I'm going to make sure the beading wire is straight in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this other one that we just cut, the 11 inch strand and just poke that through the crimp. And I'm gonna poke through until I can kind of see the end, but not go all the way through. And this might be a tight fit for you. It's kind of tight for me, especially if you're using like a, a tighter crimp. So I'm gonna get that through. Okay, so here's what I've got going on. I've got three strands inside of this crimp. And I poked this one through. And I'm gonna pull it so that it's, it's sticking out just a little bit, but not a lot. You know, just, just enough that it's gonna be caught in that crimp, but not so much that it's gonna be 
you know, visible a lot. And now I'm gonna go ahead and crimp it. Let's get rid of some of that hair though. There we go. Okay, that should probably be pretty good. And when I do my crimps, I learned this from Meredith Brody, but I, I do the, the front first to kind of shape my crimp. Most of them come out really round, but it helps just in case you have one that's not super round. You bring it down, crimp that way. So it's almost done. And then you just want to close your crimp. And that's it. And now we have three strands to work with. You can come back along if you want to with some flush cutters. Let me find mine really quick and trim what's left here. If there's if there's enough of it that it's you know really super visible. There we go. And then if you want to put a pretty crimp cover on it, I didn't do that on mine. I just figured you know it looked good as it was. But if you wanted to, you could put a crimp cover. So the um, first three, three beads we're going to string are be, going to be the star beads. And I wanted to point out that sometimes they fit over the crimp and sometimes they don't. If they do, bunks, right? You've got um, a way to hide your crimp. And if they don't, then that's okay too. Um, mine looks like it's going to sit like that. So I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it like that. On one of my designs, let's go back to my originals, it did sink in. And on one of them, it didn't. See this one? It sank right in, right up to the clasp. So just be aware of that. If that's something you you don't want to happen, just keep switching star beads until you get one that doesn't slide over it. Or put a crimp cover on and then it absolutely won't, won't slide over. That will work too. I'm gonna go ahead and put three. There you go. Okay, so now the fun part. If you've got a mix out like me, um, you can put a different color on each strand. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I did in my sample designs. But if you have a solid color, um, you can just put all solids. But I kind of mixed it up on this one. And on this one, I put them together. So there's the different colors all together. And I kind of liked that more because I have more depth to it and just more texture. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but you can also just take a solid color and do that. And even if you only have one color, just whatever you like to do is fine. Both of them look really cool to me. But let's see. And then I used four. And again, that's up to you if you want to put more than four. I just did four because that looked, you know, it could it could be kind of because you scrunch them together at the end and it makes them kind of blossom out. So four worked for that. But another number would probably still work too. Okay, there's one. And here's there's two. Okay, and then what color have I not used yet? This one. This is a really cool mix. It's got a earth tone to it. But then with the sea foam, because that one looks a little sea foam to me. So there's how it looks if I mix up my colors. And I'm just going to bring all three strands through three more of these beads. All right, so there's that. It looks kind of cool. And that's the whole thing. We just want to do that a few more times. So I'm just going to keep stringing. And if anyone has any questions, um, just jump in there because I've got lots of time to answer them. And I'm just going to be stringing for a while here. There's that. There's that color. And it doesn't matter which strand you put it on. They all kind of just kind of blend together once you go through the bigger beads. So 
that color. And then I'm gonna try this other color. I've got a fourth color in here, I haven't used it. It's a cute one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just saw the chat. Um, so for the size of wire, I'm using, yeah, 0 0.014 or 0 0.015. It's considered fine. And the reason for that choice is uh, mostly because of getting through those crimps. Um, we're going to need to get three strands through the crimp bead. I think it would work with medium if you're uh, working with a medium that is on the lighter side. Um, some mediums range from, you know, 0 0.0018 uh, or something like that. Let me like, take a quick look, make sure I'm not saying it wrong. Um, yeah, the 0 0.018 to 0 0.021 would be the range for like a medium. And if you're using that, you might have a hard time getting that third pass through your crimp. But it really depends on a lot of different things. Like if your crimp bead is is a larger diameter, like if you're working with a silver or a gold crimp, you have a better better chance. For some reason, copper crimps are always small, and I'm working with copper today, so definitely going for um, the smaller, the finer wire. And I'm gonna go back to this color. I think I like this one the most. Oops. And that way we started. The way we started the design, where we had the two strands and we brought on the crimp, um, the lobster claw there, um, you could do just that. That's how I started this design. So the third, the third strand is just a level up from that, but the, the other one is just worked on two. All right, so let's get this one through. Oh yeah, and so um, that's exactly right. Yeah, Carmen was saying that in the handout, I put links to the John Bead products that I used here. So all of the um, exact products I've got here on my mat are linked in that, in that PDF. But something you can also do is you can just improvise and see what happens. That's one of the ways that um, you know, you come up with this stuff and you just play and see what works. I probably tried a bunch of different things. I don't remember exactly what I was doing when I created this one, but I was just wanting to see those colors together because I noticed a really nice um, kind of blend between some of these twin mixes and these star beads. They complement each other really nicely. And so I was just looking for ways to put them together. This was the first thing I did. And this is, I feel like this is the thing everybody does with their beading wire and any kind of two-hole bead. And so um, that doesn't mean it's not awesome. I love it. It just, you know, it's, it's been done a lot. Um, so I was trying to just be a little different and come up with something that was a little, a little, little um, you know, unusual. Danielle, so uh, yeah. Sandy said that it would be fun to wear a couple together as a stackable. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I made this this one as a stackable that could be combined with it. So you'd have like all those looks together. And I actually, honestly, I wear this one a lot. This is one of my favorite. They're all so cute. And it goes pretty fast, you know, it's, I feel like it's taking longer, but it, it's coming along. I only have a few more repeats to do. And after each time um, I'm adding the Cornelian star bead, I am going to cinch it down so that these, these puff up. And I think someone was asking me about, you have to do three and you don't, you could do one if you wanted. And that might actually really look very cool. 
one or three beads, uh, whatever, however many of these star beads you want to use. It's totally fine. So I've got, I've got to do, I'm going to do two more of these. So I have a full length bracelet. So we're getting pretty close to having that done. And I have a goal of um, just in case anyone needs to see anything again, being able to do it two times. So I think we're doing good on that. <laughs> they just keep jumping off of my beading wire. Okay, there's one and two, and I need one more. What I like about these twin mixes, and I, I love all the twin beads, but the mixes particularly much because they take the guesswork out of creating a color combo for me. And when you're trying to do a lot of different stuff at the same time, the last thing you want to do is figure out, do these colors work? Um, so it's a, a nice little design saver, speeds it up for me. Oh yeah, Sandy, that would be great. I think it would be a beautiful necklace. And then the amount of beading wire you'd cut would just be, you know, kind of like if you were making any necklace with beading wire, you just make it a little extra length so you can get back through those crimps. And then one of those strands would need to be double the length. Danielle, your hands are just going off the edge a little bit. Oh, are they? You know, my beading mat slid down. Let me bring it back up. It's because these little twin beads, they're trying to get away from me and I'm putting them on the wire. It's like chasing them across the mat. All right, there's that one. And one more, which one does not have something on it yet? This one. All right, I think this is my last one. Okay, so I've got that one on there. I'm gonna put three more of my star beads. Oh, and Sharon says, don't forget earrings. Yeah, earrings will be really, really pretty too. And you could do those two ways. You could just have one strand hanging or you can maybe bring it together in a loop. All those things look really neat. Okay, so once you've got your, well, you've got your bracelet strong and it's the length you'd like it to be, um, keeping in mind that your clasp will add a little bit of length and depending on what clasp you're, you're using, it could be a different measure. So go ahead and measure that if you're looking to, um, you know, figure out what the length of it, just measure your clasp and then give it another, like, you know, for me, it's going to be a quarter inch on either side. Um, and then also keep in mind that it does have some 3D to it. So make it a little bit longer than you would if it was a flat bracelet, just so we can get around, right? So we can get around your wrist. And so here's where we're going to use those two crimps. Um, really quickly, I'm going to close up my, um, my jump rings because my jump rings are open. Or in fact, I'm thinking maybe some chain. I'm just going to grab some random chain that I forgot I brought up here and cut a little bit of it. So I think this is just some, um, it's either three or four millimeter. It's from my stash. I've had it forever. It's just this uh, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll cut seven links. That'll give me an inch of adjustability. I wonder if I want to gift this to somebody. I can, I can gift it and it will, it'll always fit. Okay, so that's all ready. But the first thing I want to do is just bring on one crimp and bring all three strands through it. So it's a little tricky, but just, you know, keep working at it. It'll go through. And slide those all the way down. And then check two things here. First, check and see if your bead is going to go over your crimp. Looks like mine's not. So I'm going to, I'm not going to get any air. And what I mean by air is when I created this one, 
and after I did my crimps on this one, I, um, I found that my bead slid over my first crimp. See, there's a crimp hiding under there. Check it out. So that gave me air that I wouldn't have otherwise had. So just make a call on whether or not you want that or if that's happening here, and that'll help you decide how much bend to give it or how much air to put on it so that it flows, right? So if, if you make it too tight, let me show you what I mean. It's gonna be all crinkly on you when you bend it, see? It's doing the, but if you give it a little bit of breathing room, it's gonna flow really nicely. And you'll, you'll have to play with it. But just the first thing you'll wanna check and see is if your crimps are sliding over. So on this design, I noticed that it was not sliding over. So I had to work that the air into the design for it versus just expecting it to slide and give me some space, right? Um, so either test it and make sure it doesn't slide over or um, consider that it's gonna loosen up on you a bit after you crimp it. But for me, what I wanna do here, I'm gonna bend it into a circle. I'm just holding the crimp on here. And I'm, I'm taking my time here because this is the last chance I have to get this right. Once I put this crimp together, I can't fix it again. I'd have to take it apart. So I'm gonna be super careful. Make sure it's exactly as I want it before I commit to that. Okay, yeah, and that looks good. So crimp time. All three crimps are in there. And because there's so much strands going on, it's really not possible to make sure that one's on one side or the other. I just did my best to get the crimp to look right. And then close it. I could have done better on that one. Okay, it's okay. So there's that one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my flush cutters and pick, pick a strand, any strand, and go ahead and cut that strand. Cut it right up next to the crimp. I'll try to get a little closer. Okay, so now I'm down to two strands. I got rid of one of them. And now I need my chain and another crimp. So bring this crimp onto both strands. Bring that down. And then I'm gonna take the longer of the two here and use that to do my turn. So going through my chain, bring it down, and all the way back through just that second crimp. Remember, we can't get through the one we crimped already. And so what I did here is I'm holding on to this side and pulling, pulling with the one that's moving through, right? That's this one here. Now I'm going to crimp that. And I'm going to trim both of those strands. So one of those strands is coming out in this direction. And the other one is coming out in that direction. And that's pretty much it. And then just the fun part of adding some cute charms. Um, I did a bunch of wire wrapping um, for my some of my charms on the last one. Um, and what I didn't do that I think would be cool is actually putting some crimp covers on those crimps. I think I just couldn't find the copper ones, <laughs> but it, it actually would add to design, the design a lot if you put those on there. And what else? So let me show you on here to see what everyone's interested in seeing. I was kind of just playing with making the um, charms with any bead, you can use any bead, but wrapping the twin beads around the cornelian star beads seemed like a really cool way to make a charm, a dangle. And I threw some pearls on that one. This is just a, a regular strung bracelet with some pearls. Because these beads, the star beads um, and the twin together with pearls looked really amazing in this color. So that's what I was doing there. Um, 
we have, we're doing really good on time. So we could, we could make another, another bracelet like this one. If there's anyone who wants to see it again, we could maybe make one of these. Um, I can show how to make those dangles. So let's give everyone a second to jump in the chat and say what they, what they most want to see. Or new ideas. <laughs> I'll see if I, if I get any comments, Danielle, but um, I think Pat finished hers too. Pat, oh, yeah. I just want to lift yours up so Danielle can have a peek. Ooh, that's so pretty. That's a big thing. Yeah. You're so fast, Pat. <laughs> you have done already. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm loving this color. This is like, I'm going to be wearing this one today. So Danielle, because we're quiet on the sidebar, I think you should show the alternate bracelet. Do the alternate one? All right. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. I had um, kind of another idea for charms for this one. I was going to bring in some of those little green dragonflies. Let's see, let's see if I have those handy. Thank you. So yeah, got those. How cute would that be? So this one is a charm bracelet. I'm gonna bring that one back out. And the only tricky part of it at all, and it's not tricky really, is um, getting the length right because it's gonna go around the wrist two times. So what I did to get around the fact that I'm really, when I math sometimes don't exactly land it, I went way over <laughs> my number and it was fine. And then I had lots of maneuverability with my crimps at the end. You only need two crimps for this design because it's just worked on two strands that are treated as one in the beginning. So let me grab my beading wire. I wanted it to go around twice with some wiggle room for clasping. My finished length on this design is about 13 inches. So you're going for 13, 14 inches or so um, if you want a seven inch bracelet. 13 is more like six and a half. And it would be a cute choker too, look at that. Um, but yeah, cuts anywhere between because you, you remember you need maneuvering right for your crimps so anywhere from I don't know I think I'm going to cut about 36 or even 40 inches or so just to make sure I have enough I'm more than I need it's most certainly more than I need but and Danielle can I ask you a technical question Yeah, go for it. You're using wire. Um, have you ever used um, a, a different type of stringing material to do this? Or have um, you always used a fine wire? Different than beading wire for this type of design? Well, yes. Um, so this is often a stitch design. I've seen this done with bead weaving thread. Usually um, you would see, see a wire guardian on this side and they start with the two hole beads. So, for example, um, you would you would go through one side through a wire guardian. So ignore the, this bead here. Just consider you're starting with with the twin bead, and the wire guardian would sit on top of the twin bead, and then you'd stitch all one side. So you'd pick up, you know, with your needle, you'd be picking these all up, all the way. And then if you're having beads like this, just go through them, go through them. You'd reach all the way to the other side, go through another wire guardian, and come back through the open side and knit it all together. And then often you need to go all the way back through it again and reinforce it, depending on the type of thread you're using. Wildfire, you can get away with one pass. Um, if you're using like a size D Nymo or beading thread, you'd need two passes. Thanks, Danielle. I, I wanted to ask, because not everybody has wire, but um, the beaters always have good thread. Oh yeah, and this is definitely, as a stitch design, I mean, we could do that for a class. I, I feel like it's kind of um, something that everybody's seen before, but. If there's interest, we can definitely do that. It's just not something that, you know, is, is that's original as I didn't come up with it. It's something that I just, I've seen a lot of places, but it's definitely, um, you know, it's freemium out there. <laughs> Let me grab another class. Um, one of those. All right, so same thing we did before. We're gonna cut a really long strand and we're going to bring the clasp to the midpoint. And then just go ahead and bring the ends together so you can find your midpoint. 
bring that down and bring on a clasp. Put it on both strands. Okay. And then the same thing we did before, we just want to make sure we leave some air so that the clasp can move freely. And I'm going to straighten the crimp out. And so that, look, that one came out pretty good. It's easier when it doesn't have multiple strands in there. And then one thing I forgot to do that I'll need to do really quick is get some chain of pliers and put some jump rings on my charms. They don't already have those hanging on. Some charms have them. But if you want your charms to sit facing like forward, you'll want to put a jump ring on there. So let's grab, I'll just do a couple. because we... But for my original design, I put a bunch of stars and one for every segment. I'll show that again. There's a charm in between all of them. One more. Okay, let's go ahead and put something here. Ooh, let's see these ones. Butterflies. And I actually thought of making this like green and black. I have some of the black star beads, and then I have um, a bunch of our twin beads in these kind of colors. That would be really fun to mix that up. Let's see how far we get. All right. Okay, so from here, you want to go ahead and just slide on one of the larger beads. And just double check. You see, here's one where it went right over my crimp. And maybe I'm okay with that. I'm gonna let it do that. But just note that if, if it's going to do that, plan for it, right? So that you know you have a right, the right amount of air on your strands. Um, so there's that. And now what I'm gonna do is try to string um, the twin beads in like a pattern and your pattern is totally up to you. But what I did here is I just went kind of light to dark in the center with, um, looks like I did five, four, three, and then I went back from four to five. So I'll stick with that because I know the dimensions and measures for that. Um, but you can string any color pattern you want. I was just ombre. Another great reason to use a mix, so you can do that. So let's start with a light color, which is this one. Let's get five of those. It, it can be kind of tricky to string these, right? Because you're, you can try the double needle method, which is what I'm doing here. And alternatively, what you can do is you can just string them all on one strand through one hole and then bring the other one through. Let's see which is faster. So here's my other one. And then I'm just going to bring that through all of them. I think that's faster, but definitely try whichever way works for you and see. And of course, if you're using beading wire um, versus or thread, sorry, um, you'll have an even easier time. Because then you're just stitching it, right? Let's go for this color. I want four of these. And I just realized that this, the part of this that takes the longest is actually the stringing. So I might just do a single strand for demo purposes, but it's the same concept if you're making double or single. Okay, so I want three of these dark green. I'm sticking with my kind of color convention from the other one. Way. 
So yeah, just bringing one strand through each of the holes in those, those two hole twin beads. And I'll ombre back down with four of those other colors. Hopefully you guys are working along. So this part is a little bit kind of the same thing, but Actually, I think it's really fun. <laughs> so there's those four. And then let's get five of that other color. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the chat. All right, there we go. So that's what I did on the um, the demo one. Is that little ombre pattern like that? And that's really cute. You just need another one of these kind of beads, little star beads. And if you're doing a charm, bring on that charm now, fitting two strands through your jump ring, and then you need another one of the star beads. Hi, I'm off camera again. There we go. I need to tape my mat. <laughs> OK, so that, that's just really cute. So that's basically the whole thing for stringing it. And that's going to be a really neat design. What's the measure on it? Let's take a look. So at this spot right here, for me, it's like three and a quarter. So almost the midpoint of, um, of like a, a single wrap is right here. So I might just do the other side, and then I'll show you how to finish it. But if you're making the full super long length like this one, or even like three wraps, it's the same thing over and over again. You just keep going. I'm gonna try something different for the side. I'm gonna just string them all in one strand and then bring the new one through. I do think that's proving to be faster. Oh. Good news, the beads did not come off the other side. <laughs> they went flying last time. When I was working on the samples, they went flying. Let's see, there's four, I need five. Danielle, when you submitted this as a class idea, from the picture, it looked really complicated. Now that oh, you're yeah. doing it, it seems really straightforward. And since you can do it in about 20 or 30 minutes, it'd be great for a craft fair. Oh yeah, this is definitely one of those. And they, they're really popular at craft fairs, both the stitched version and, and the wire versions. They just have a really cool look to them. And the addition of the charms really levels it up. There we go. It's coming along. Okay, now the fun part. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get this to go through all of them. Just gonna move this up. And I'm not sure for the, hmm, it's a good question. Generally, beading wire is gonna cost you more than beading thread. 
you get a lot more beading thread, you know, than you know on a on a spool than you do beading wire for sure. Um, I don't know really. I think that it would be kind of in the noise as far as pricing because your real driver is going to be, of course, your time and your beads, and it would also be, you know, like all else equal if you use the same beads, same charms, maybe just a slightly less expensive to do it on thread. Also, Danielle, there are some really fine stringing wires that are sterling or are a, a precious metal. Ooh. So if you use a, a higher end wire, it would add cost. That's true, yeah. There's so much variation out there. Um, for different kinds of, of materials though. I'm curious, there's gotta be even more things that would work, you know? All right, so how are we doing on time? We're, we're doing okay, but I might go ahead and finish this one just so you can see how to end the crimp, even though I normally I would keep going for a really long distance um, for, you know, making it at least go around twice the rest. But let's see what kind of length I've got here. I want to add a little bit more because this is going to be short. So let me put a few more on. Let's add my butterfly here. But something else I could have done is I could have measured and made sure that this was exactly my center point, which I thought I did, but it's not adding up now. So I'm going to keep up going just a little bit. Got the same repeats, looks right. That's super cute. <laughs> I love this one. I need about another inch on this one. what you can do when you're just, you know, when you're designing on your mat and you're figuring out like, how do I want this to look? You're, you're probably gonna take it apart a few times while you're working just to get the centering. And I definitely did that on the sample. I tried it on a bunch of times, took it apart a couple of times and got the spacing exactly how I wanted it. But then once you've got a template like that, you can copy it. Probably there as far as the link. We'll test it one more time. And you can also put the um, the stars more frequently. Like you could just do four and then two stars, four and two stars, or anything you want to do is going to work out great. I wanted to point out one little thing that you see how at this end it's like curling, and I keep flattening it. That's going to happen a lot when we get right to the end. We're going to do something where we we pull it on both sides to make it. It's a lot easier to do um, when it's only one wrap. When it's two wraps, it's tricky, but I'll, I'll at least be able to show you the concept of how to do that. So let me get through the rest of these beads with other wire here. Danielle, showing how to fix it is a great idea because I'm I'm curious um, if this could be done with the Tila bead. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There any any two hole bead will work with this. And you'll get a different look depending on the bead, and they'll all be great. So what I'm doing right now is I'm laying it flat on the mat and making sure that there's no spin to it. And what causes the spin, I should mention, is different length going through on one side versus the other. So if it's spinning on one side, try pulling just, so I'm pinching the clasp on this side and pulling just one of the strands, and then I'll alternate to the other strand, making sure each one. So there you go, now my twist is gone. 
So if you do that one time, you'll have it. Um, go ahead and bring on a crimp bead, or sorry, one more star bead to end that design on this side, then your crimp bead. And again, we're gonna put that on both of our strands and just slide that down. And then I'm gonna need a little bit more chain. You can find where I put my chain, it wandered off. I have like a hundred things on my desk right now. <laughs> you know, it's a good class when you have like all the beads out. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do my seven links again. Some chain opens, you don't have to waste a link like that. But this is old chain that I just had and, but I definitely prefer the kind you can open. And I just lost a crimp inside of my bead. So I got to put that back. Okay. All right. And so we're going to do something a little different. Remember before we, we had the opportunity when we were working with those three strands, we had that opportunity to bring everything through and get it just right. Well, this is a little, little on the trickier side because you're going to have to do that while you're putting your chain on. So you've got the chain on one strand. Eating wire, both strands are going through the crimp. And now I'm going to bring one of those strands. That's the one that went through my chain. Bring it back through the crimp. And go ahead and go through your star bead. And what I might do, if you guys will bear with me, I'm going to choose a bead that's small. Let's look at, so there's that whole size. And that one's smaller. I'm going to go with this one so my crimp stops sliding back into it. You might need to do that on yours. Okay, so go ahead. And then back to getting the chain on one of the strands. Bring it down. And I haven't adjusted everything yet. I'm just getting everything in, in position. So back through the crimp, one head and continue through the star bead. Okay. So you'll have something that looks like that. And we just need to tighten it up, but not too much. So again, I'm going to do that testing that it's got some flow to it. Slide it down as much as it'll tolerate there. And then grab this one, grab this one, and pull that air out, leaving just a little bit. And that looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and crimp mine. Same thing as before, we need to trim both of those strands. Trim that one there. And then being super careful not to cut the part that's securing my chain. I'm going to cut this one over here. Okay. Oh, that was so cute. So just a, it's a single one and it's asymmetric because I'm measuring challenge today, <laughs> but it looks super cute anyway. And I think I'm going to put it on and wear it for the rest of the day. So love it. Feeling these colors. These colors are really rocking it. Yeah. What do you guys think? You guys want to see? Let's see. How are we doing on time? We've got a little bit of time. If you want to play with wire and do some wraps with the twin beads and the carnelian star beads, you could play with that or questions. Um, definitely questions too. I'm going to bring my other bracelet out. How cute are these together? Oh my gosh. But they're crying out for dangles on the chain. <laughs> they're like, please put a dangle at the end. I always do that because it gives you weight when you're putting it on so that the chain will hold. You could put one of these charms on it. I like to tie this together. I might put that there. Just right out the gate. That makes them go together. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, Carmen, do you think I could do a wrap real quick? Is there time? You know what, Danielle, do the wrap. Do the wrap? Okay, let's do it. Actually, I wanted to see the wrap, so. I'm really loving on that too. I'm so vote I, for the wrap. I figured. So I've got one with just a charm. And this one, I feel like this one's done. This one looks gross great. Uh, I'm going to bring this one over and try to put something on the end. So grab a star bead. And I'm going to grab four of these. And what I'm going for, 
I want to do something that looks kind of like that, where it just like fans, right? So I'm going to use some craft wire. I've just got some regular 22 gauge craft wire. And I'm going to cut more than I need. About how much is this? Let me measure it. I'm going to cut like four inches or so. And then get some roundness first. I'm straightening the wire really quick because mine is all bent. And there's a couple ways you can do this, but the way that I was doing it before was kind of just brought the bead on there and I folded it up and then slid There are a lot of ways you can do this. So this is just one way. So one, two, three, four. Four might be too many. Let's do three. Bring it together. To do that, I'm just gonna cross this at the top. We might have to play with it a little bit. Make it sit like that. I'm going to secure this side of the wire. And so I'm just wrapping this around. Just twice there. Tighten it down. And if you have any of those nylon chop wires, you can tighten it here. I might try to do it with just my hands, but I'm pulling on the side that's does not that's going through the center of the bead, so I can tighten this stuff here, right? Because my wrap's loose on the wire, and the more I pull on this, the tighter this connection on the side will be, so that they'll fan and pop. And there we go. So now I feel like that looks good. So I'm going to trim, trim this side. I'm gonna be a little careful so I don't cut the wire I don't wanna cut. And give me the pointy pliers. Where are my pointy pliers? All right, so now the rest of it is just a very simple top kind of like wrapped loop. And this has the fun of looking like a messy wrap, I feel like. So I'm going to fold that forward, bring this up, slide it down, going around. So just like that. I'm going to hold my loop and grab my round nose. I'm just going to start going around. And I could stop there, or I could keep going and make it messy. Um, I think I like that, but I'm gonna stick with that. And last but not least, tucking that tail. So go there. And that's it. And I just need a jump ring and put it on the end and I'm good. And I have a brand new bracelet for today. Two of them, actually. All right, we did it. Two bracelets, super cute together. Easy. Yeah. I'll make a, make a glamour shot here. Here we go. Yeah, I really like this design. So I hope you guys like it too. I had a lot of fun with these and um, I still have more ideas that I wanna do for colors. I'd like to do one with the um, that mix I just showed you here. Something like that going on with the black cornelian star beads. That would be really cool. Um, and then I thought with that one, I might put the beads on it. I'm a little late for B-Day, but how cute would that be with the 
I could even pull in some yellow. I don't know. So sky's the limit. Um, I'd love to see your ideas. So as always, if you can tag us when you um, post your work, if you want to tag John Bede, hashtag John Bede, we'll see it. If you're on our Facebook group, share it there. And we'd love to see everything that you guys create. And if you're free on Friday, this Friday, we have um, one of those premium classes with Michaels. And that one, we're doing some earrings. Um, it's a two hour workshop. We're going to do some Preciosa Crystal Fringe. Gorgeous, over the top statement fringe. Really cool looking. So um, if you have time on Friday and you'd like to join us for that, that's at the same time as this class was, but it goes on for two hours. And you can sign up for that at michaels.com slash classes. All right, you guys, I want to wish you guys a great week. I'm going to switch to gallery view, see if anyone has anything pulled up. And so I don't want to miss it. If you do, So cool. <laughs> oh, yay. I see Valerie's. That's a pretty color. I love that you did the rondelles with that. And Pat, oh my gosh, Pat has the class done for June um, 5th, I believe it is. No, it's June 3rd. June 3rd. Yeah, so the one Pat's holding up, if you guys can see Pat's bracelet, is what we are teaching on June 3rd for Michaels. So that one you can also, I believe it's on the website. You can register for that. Um, we have a dream catcher one after that for the ears. Um, uh, sun catchers like where they're stitched inside and I'll have those all ready to show you guys on in our Friday class this week all right I'll let you guys go get on with your the rest of your day and have a great evening and have a good dinner um, for those of you on the east coast <laughs> all right bye